Hey guys, welcome back to the Z Code System channel here on YouTube. I'm Drew and it's good to have you back here for another look at the English Premier League as we go into match day 12 this weekend with the usual big games that we all expect from the Premier League each and every weekend. Now, a lot of things happening as we get to a very busy period in the Premier League. Well, in really in the different leagues around Europe, we're going to have a very busy time this year and the COVID pandemic uh, really condenses things and gives us a lot of football coming up over the next couple of weeks. Uh, that is very true for the Premier League as the Christmas time period is always a very busy uh, schedule for teams as they play in the league uh, with games going on on Boxing Day, the day after Christmas, as well as uh, games throughout the week after that. And it's very busy up until that point as well. And this weekend, we're going to have some big games going on. And we're going to talk about a couple of games uh, coming up on Sunday. And that is December the 13th. And we're going to talk about those games for match day 12. Uh, and those are also going to lead into some big midweek matches that are going to happen next week on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So a lot to play for this weekend for teams. And of course, you can always go over to Z Code System and use the VIP and all the tools we have there to get up to date and to help you make great sports betting picks, whether it be on the Premier League or, as you can see there, the NFL, which is coming up this weekend, also on December the 13th. As you see, we have the NFL picks uh, for the week there, the game of the week, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Buffalo Bills. Should be an exciting game. But of course, we're talking about world football. We're talking about association football. We're talking about the English Premier League. And we're going to talk about match day 12, which is coming up this weekend uh, and begins today as I talk to you on Friday and carries over into Monday. So let's get on to that. Okay, guys, so today I'm going to be using the Soccer Buddy tool. It's a tool that you've seen me use a lot more in recent uh, weeks here on the YouTube channel on Z Code System uh, because I really like this Soccer Buddy tool and it is a, uh, a great device to give you up uh, picks and suggestions for your Premier League betting. Uh, and I highly recommend it if you need help uh, understanding it, if you need um, a little bit more knowledge on it. Of course, you can use the handy dandy video that we created there for you and uh, get some more information on that. Now, um, I've obviously set this for December the 13th. We're looking at the English Premier League, and I've also opened up the Hot Trends. So uh, all you have to do is show Hot Trends, and then we can go down and have a look at these games. Now, um, on the blog, I've only highlighted a couple of games this weekend, two big games, Crystal Palace and Tottenham Hotspur, as well as the Southampton Sheffield United game. So you can go over there and you can read up on my information there, but I'm going to talk you through uh, those games, and I'm also going to touch on some other games uh, here on the video, a little bit special treat for you here on YouTube. Um, so we've got, uh, let's start really with that Tottenham versus Crystal Palace game. That game's going to be at Selhurst Park, uh, home of Crystal Palace. And as we can see there, Tottenham Hotspur are the favorites going into this game. Spurs uh, playing some great football right now. They won in midweek, uh, once again in the Europa League 2-0. And uh, they uh, stamped their pass on into the knockout stage of that competition. So now they're going to be playing um, on multiple fronts with the Premier League, uh, the Carabao Cup, and the... Uh, Europa League as well as the uh, they're going to be playing in the FA Cup come January. Now, looking at the latest odds today uh, on Bet365, that's my favorite sports book online. You Obviously, there are other sports books out there, so uh, go and use your favorite. But um, Spurs, I believe, were plus 500 to win the Premier League this season. Now, they are in first place right now, 21 points from uh, 33 possible um, at the minute. And they are on a great run of form right now. But Sportsbook's not really giving them necessarily maybe the credit that uh, they deserve as um, a team that could go on and win the Premier League season. Now, they're only in first place right now over Liverpool, thanks to goal difference. And if you're a Liverpool fan like myself, you will have seen over the last few weeks, um, last few months, Liverpool not getting certain calls uh, due to VAR. Now, this is very debatable because of the way that VAR is used in uh, England and in the Premier League, but we've seen Liverpool not get some calls while 
uh, their biggest rival, Manchester United, have gotten a few favorable calls from VAR, or uh, in some cases, like last week, VAR not being used to review uh, certain uh, plays or certain um, outcomes that led to goals. So there's a lot of um, debate over that right now, and Spurs have benefited because Liverpool have dropped points because of various calls that have gone on or no calls. But Spurs go into this weekend, top of the Premier League, and they're taking on a Crystal Palace team that, by all intents and purposes, they should beat. Uh, Spurs are a good team, and when they play lesser teams in the Premier League, teams in the bottom half, uh, they tend to get wins. They tend to um, go out and do very well. Uh, Tottenham's only loss this season came to Everton at home on the opening day of the season when Everton um, kickstarted the season really well, and Spurs uh, just had a bit of a setback that first weekend. So Tottenham are playing well. Now, when Tottenham play the better teams in the league, such as they did with Chelsea a few weeks ago, you're going to see Jose Mourinho park the bus. They're going to give up a lot of possession. They're going to give up a lot of shots and try to hit on the counterattack. Now, last weekend, we did see Tottenham dominate North London rival Arsenal, uh, beating them 2-0. And, um, you know, they should dominate and win this game against Crystal Palace just as they did last weekend, which will set them up perfectly for a match day 13 game on Wednesday night at Anfield against Liverpool in a top of the table clash, which we can all expect Jose Mourinho to park the bus and attempt to uh, just play a very, very boring defensive game uh, against Liverpool. So, but um, it should be a a very fun game to watch uh, because it will be the top two teams, uh, we assume, based on results this weekend. So I'm going Tottenham on this game. Uh, They should get get a win here. Crystal Palace, not the best attacking team, and they should struggle. Forget about Crystal Palace scoring five goals last week against West Brom because West Brom are terrible. Uh, Tottenham will win this game, um, and I expect, um, or I think that they can keep a clean sheet. I know we have a score prediction there of two to one, but I do believe Tottenham may be able to keep a clean sheet in this game just as they did against Arsenal last week. Now, speaking of Arsenal, let's take a look at that game there. Arsenal and Burnley going to be played at the Emirates in London. Arsenal going in as favourites here and really should pick up a win. Now, Arsenal are not a very good team this season. 13 points from 33 possible. Struggling under Mikel Arteta and reports this week in England where Arteta has a few games, two, three, to save his job. Now, Arsenal did win in midweek in the Europa League, defeating uh, Dundalk. I believe it was 4-2. And they go into this game now having a little bit of momentum despite uh, losing, I believe it is, three of their last four games in the Premier League, uh, including that game last week to Tottenham Hotspur, 2-0 away to Spurs at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Now, again, like I said, Arsenal, not a very good team despite the money that they've spent and the players that they have. And it's a bit of a shock because they're trending backwards because Arteta had really improved them. He took over about a year ago as manager. He, he improved them greatly, uh, got them a lot more organized. Uh, they were a much better team defensively than they were under Unai Emery. Uh, and he was able to win the FA Cup and then go on to win the Community Shield at the beginning of this season, defeating Liverpool on penalties. Uh, it's just not happened for Arsenal. Um, they're, they were able to re-sign star striker Pierre Emerick Aubameyang uh, at the beginning of this season. He's not really done much this season. He got that big contract and uh, is very much struggling. Thomas Partey, I believe they paid £45 million for him uh, at the uh, during the transfer window. He's struggled for form and he's also injured. So he's out of this game uh, with a thigh strain and continues to uh, have setbacks with his fitness. Uh, but we've also seen uh, players such as Nicolas Pepe uh, struggle, continue to struggle. They paid £72 million for him in the summer of 2019. Uh, he's going to miss this game for the third straight weekend uh, due to a red card picked up a few weeks ago for headbutting a Leeds United player during the game. So he will miss that. And um, really, again, like I say, struggling uh, team right here. But they are playing one of the worst teams in the league right now, Burnley in the bottom three. Um, I'm afraid well, not afraid, uh, but um, get, I'm assuming Burnley are going to go down this season. I don't think they're a very good team. Uh, they don't have very good players. The uh, the quality in the sides for Sean Dyche is probably the weakest he has had um, since Burnley returned to the Premier League a few seasons ago. Um, and the investment has just not been there uh, at Burnley. And there's been talks of takeovers uh, at the club this season. So I'm expecting them to go down uh, with a bit of a fight. Uh, and I like that 2-1 scoreline. That's exactly the score that they had last season at the Emirates. Uh, and as you can see, they're a 1-1 scoreline prediction at halftime. Uh, and that was also the uh, result last year 
when these teams played at the Emirates. So I like that score line and I like that over 2.5 goals. So I'm going Arsenal on this one over Burnley, 2-1 to one, over 2.5 goals. Now let's move on to Liverpool and Fulham. They're going to be going at it um, at Fulham's Craven Cottage. Liverpool, the heavy favorites. Fulham struggling this season since they've come back up uh, from the EFL Championship. And they should um, continue their struggles against Liverpool. Now, that's a 2-1 scoreline, which I disagree with. I think Liverpool are playing very well this season. And um, obviously, they're in second place right now just because of goal difference. Tottenham Hotspur scoring more goals and uh, just ahead of them. But Liverpool can take first place back uh, next Wednesday when they play Tottenham at home. Again, love Liverpool for this game. I expect them to win and to... You know, I expect them to maybe put three goals past Fulham. It's going to be a professional performance from the Reds on the road. And I think Fulham are going to struggle. Fulham's defense has been very, very poor this season. And I don't even like them to get a goal. Uh, Liverpool have been very good defensively uh, as of late. Now, they've had a lot of injury issues, but being champions and having a very good squad, they have been able to um, adapt to those problems and have been able to win. A um, couple of weeks ago, a uh, week ago, we saw that um, goalkeeper Allison Becker went down with a shoulder, or excuse me, went down with a uh, hamstring injury, uh, just a bit of a tweak to, to put him out for a few weeks. Um, I expect him to come back in, on Wednesday, but we probably will see backup goalkeeper Kelleher in this game. Now, he is, I believe, 20 years old. He was third choice goalkeeper just a couple of weeks ago. Jurgen Klopp was not happy with the performances of Adrian, uh, Liverpool's typical or usual backup goalie. Um, so he gave the youngster Kelleher a go, and Kelleher has kept two clean sheets in his last two, uh, excuse me, he's kept two clean sheets in his last three games um, and really should have kept one last weekend uh, or last week in the uh, in the Champions League against Michelin. Uh, unfortunately, uh, again, a VAR call not going in favor of Liverpool, giving a penalty uh, to Michelin and uh, a goal was conceded. But he has given or he's kept two clean sheets in his last three games. Uh, that includes a clean sheet win against the Wolverhampton Wanderers last week in a 4-0 game. Brilliant game for Liverpool. A 4-0 win. And the, the game before that in the Champions League against Ajax, which was a 1-0 win. Um, I expect Liverpool to to win this game, win to nil. Um, I don't like that first half score prediction of Fulham win, uh, Fulham leading at halftime 1-0. Um, I think Liverpool will have no issues uh, handling Fulham and setting up that game against Tottenham Hotspur next weekend. The, uh, the Reds are getting players back to full fitness, and um, I think that is going to see them on to a victory and uh, that big clash with Spurs, which I can't wait for. Now, look at our last game. I'm going to give you a fourth game this week. Now, again, the blog only had two picks, so that's why you need to watch our YouTube channel because we'll give you some extra picks on these. And uh, also, be sure that if you like what you're seeing, subscribe to the channel and smash that thumbs up down there. And let us know what you want to see here on the YouTube channel. Now, looking at that game, Sheffield United taking on Southampton at St. Mary's down in Southampton on the South Coast. Sheffield United, bottom of the Premier League table. They've been wholly awful this season. Um, unbelievably bad, and um, I don't think that they are going to be getting off the foot of the table for the rest of the season. Um, this is a team that was built around defense last year, and that's what really helped them get to where they were. They finished mid-table and at times flirted with making the Europa League. Uh, Sheffield United uh, built on defense, like I said, and they they were able to get timely goals and keep teams from scoring that is not happening this season. They're not keeping goals out, and they're not getting timely goals. Uh, a remarkable thing is manager Chris Wilder paid um, a, a very large sum of money, somewhere around £25 million, pounds, a little bit less than that, for Rianne Brewster from Liverpool. Uh, Brewster has barely played for Sheffield United, not given much of a chance, um, and is finding himself mostly on the bench. Now, would he be able to ease these problems at Sheffield United? He has a good chance he could because he's a very good um, young player and he proved himself last season playing uh, for the second half of the campaign for Swansea City in the championship scoring goals. So um, we'll see if he uh, gets a chance to play this weekend. But for the most part, Sheffield United are not scoring goals at all. They're shipping him. Um, Aaron Ramsdale signed in the summer to play as goalkeeper. Um, hasn't done well, uh, and especially after Dean Henderson um, has succeeded so well last season for Sheffield United. Um, he's come, Ramsdale that is, has come in and just uh, put in some poor performances, and he's not really had that strong, uh, rigid defense in front of him like, uh, like Henderson had uh, just last season. 
Now, Southampton are on the up and up. They are fifth in the league right now. And Ralph Hasenhudel, I believe, is in the, uh, well, he's in the second full season um, at Southampton, third overall. Uh, and he's really got them playing um, to their potential. Um, Southampton are, are looking very good. They should have won um, a couple of weeks ago against Manchester United, up 2-0 at halftime, but gave up three goals in the second half, including the winner in second half stoppage time to lose that game. That's their only blemish. Uh, in recent weeks, they did get a win on Monday night uh, on match day 11 against South Coast rivals Brighton. 2-1 thanks to Danny Ings coming off the bench and scoring a penalty. Now, the big news here is Ings is back from a uh, slight knee injury. He went on, he underwent a uh, a little knee operation to repair some damage there, um, but uh, was able to come back last week. And he is going to be able to uh, push them on, I think. I think this is a really good team that has a great shot at fighting for a Europa League place. Now, Southampton are close enough to make, I believe, the top four, the top three this weekend if they win and results go their way elsewhere. Uh, I think they'll win. I don't think they're going to have a problem with Sheffield United, uh, but I do not believe that they're going to be able to crack that top three or top four because of results um, elsewhere. Um, but this is a really good team and a team to keep your eye on, um, especially when they're playing teams at the bottom or in the second bottom half of the table. Uh, Ings is a, a fantastic player and he's really uh, in fine form right now, but Hassan, who's manager there at uh, Southampton, he has got players uh, such as Che Adams who have really hit the ground running this season after not a very good year last year, and um, a lot of critics, um, you know, wondering why Southampton paid so much money for a player such as Che Adams. Um, he's really um, excelled this season after having a year to bet in to the Premier League. So I like Southampton for this game. I don't really think Sheffield and Knight are going to get on the score sheet here. I think it's going to be a 2-0 win for Southampton, very professional win as they go on um, to pick up another three points and really strengthen that top five position that they have at the moment. So those are my picks this weekend, guys. Uh, we've talked about four games here on the YouTube channel for Z-Code System, and you can go over and read a little bit more about those uh, other games I profiled over at the blog, which were the Sheffield United-Southampton game and the Tottenham Hotspur-Crystal Palace game. So you can go over there, you can get a little bit more information about what's going on in the Premier League this weekend with those games. And, uh, you know, let us know what you want to see here on the YouTube channel. And if you like what you see, if you keep coming back, or if this is your first time even, you know, give us a subscribe and a thumbs up and let us know what you like and what you don't like here. And uh, we'll keep bringing it to you guys. Thank you so much for watching Z Code System here on YouTube and our Premier League Match Day 12 picks. I'm Drew, and I'll see you next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.